Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Christina. Before the weekend would wow the world to become the songbird for our generation, winning 36 awards out of 117 nominations at the time of this recording. Everybody that's been a part of it, and I want to thank my fans and of course my mother. Thank you, I love you. Bye. Before delivering panty dropper hits like High For This, Earned It, and The Hills, and also having the first radio hit single about cocaine since the 70s, For The Weeknd asked Bella Hadid to be on the cover of his album, met with her, then started dating the then 18 year old model. Goodbye, honey. I have to go be The Weeknd. Oh, but it's only Tuesday, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Before The Weeknd collaborated with some of the best in the biz and appeared on SNL, and then wowed the world when he cut off his signature hairdo. I love it! I think he looks so handsome! The Weeknd grew up a quiet boy raised by a single mother who immigrated to Canada from Ethiopia. When his father left the family, his mom struggled to make ends meet, and it was his grandmother who would raise him and have him speaking an Ethiopian language. At school he took French immersion, but multiple dialects wasn't his only pastime. He began smoking pot at a young age and also developed a serious love for music. Into his teens he developed an appetite for harder drugs and decided to drop out of school at 17. And I live in a van down by the river. After spending some time living in a van, he eventually moved out with his friends and became a bit of a party animal living in a numb haze for years. An experience that would shape his music and usher in a new age of R&B. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCrudden, documenting the life of the weekend prior to fame. Here for you on Before They Are Famous. Now this is an updated version. We've also covered his fellow star from The Six, Drake, as well as his smoking hot girlfriend Bella Hadid. Be sure to check those out, but in the meantime, let us know who you want us to document next. Alright, I don't know what time it is. Weekend, huh? Weekend, baby. Weekend. You don't know what's in store. Abel McConan Tesfe was born on the 16th of February 1990 in Toronto, Canada. His parents, McConan and Samara, came to Canada in the 80s from Ethiopia. His father abandoned the family, and Abel's mom was working several jobs to help support her small family. Abel was raised by his grandmother and learned to speak the native language of Amharic. He developed an interest at a young age with Michael Jackson being one of his early faves. He credits his track Don't Stop Till You Get Enough as the song that helped him find his own voice. That combined with the sad Ethiopian songs that his mother would play, well that shaped his unique vocal style. In elementary school, Abel was in French immersion and spoke French all day, something other kids made fun of at recess. They called him Frenchy. Oh bullies, they can be so dumb. I didn't say stop. Sharona. He went to Samuel Hearn Middle School and started loving the sweet R&B sounds of the 90s. He was listening to Aaliyah and Genuine and started smoking pot when he was 11. So naturally, Pink Floyd and Zeppelin were thrown into the mix. Later he attended Birchmont Park Collegiate Institute, which must have been a total party school because even our own Amber Smith, she used to go there. Shout outs to Abel. In high school, Abel started getting involved in using harder and harder drugs. When he was 16, he was at a college toga party and lost his virginity in a drunken, sloppy encounter. He remembers it being a horrible experience and would go on to make up for it with many, many, many more meaningful experiences. When he was 17, Abel was kicked out of school and forced to attend a much rougher one on the other side of town. In grade 11, and with all his friends left behind, Abel lasted about six months before he decided to drop out. Following this, when he became self-conscious about his intellect, well, he would do cross words to keep up his vocabulary. Now he talked about his early days, you know, living by himself. In his previous Before They Are Famous, let's take a look. At the age of 17, he dropped out of school. He convinced fellow XO member Lamar to do the same, and they grabbed their mattresses from their homes, they threw them in a car, and that's where they would live for some time. And he went on to say he was a pretty shitty van. Not even a good one. Eventually, they ended up moving into a one bedroom in the hip Parkdale area of Toronto, which no joke is like five minutes away from where I filmed these videos. They started going to local bars and developed quite the reputation. More seriously, Abel made the hip hop duo Bullies and Nerds and rapped under the name Kin Kane. When that didn't take off, he wrote songs for a production company called Noise. Soon he formed XO with his roommates and named their next project The Weekend, which comes from the weekend they left school and never came back. 
they dropped the E to avoid copyright issues with an existing Canadian band. Yeah, I could see why he didn't want to be confused with them. You know. Abel then met producer Jeremy Rose and pitched him a dark self-titled R&B album. Rose supplied the brooding instrumentals with Abel's soaring vocals and they pumped out three tracks in one sitting. In December of 2010, he uploaded The Morning, Loft, Music and What You Need on his own YouTube channel and started messaging his friends to take a look. Within a short time, the kid was making a big name for himself in Toronto. Here's a clip of him performing at the Mod Club in 2011. Tracks reached the ears of Drake's manager who posted on Drizzy's blog and boom went the dynamite. All of a sudden everyone was listening to his work. The Weeknd released his House of Balloons mixtape a few months later, again for free download on his website. But the cover art didn't show his face and although it added to the intrigue of his brand, he did it because he was camera shy, out of shape and not considering himself all that handsome. Abel was sure he didn't pack any star appeal, instead he used artful nudes of some young hotties to sell his music, not a bad idea. Probably what I was trying to do when I had Amber hosting some of these videos. I'm gonna throw that top on. His mixtape gained critical praise, and even though people had no idea if The Weeknd was a person or a group, they were eating it up. But Abel was dodging interviews left and right. Then in July of 2011, he decided to lift the veil and go on tour. But I still got you. out his locks and found inspiration in urban artist Jean-Michel Besquit. He wanted to be an icon and if he cut off the mop, well he just looked like everyone else. He then started collaborating steadily with Drake and got some work on Drake's album Take Care. He released his second and third mixtapes that year as well, again available for free download on his website. The guy wasn't worried about making any coin out the gate. Thursdays and Echoes of Silence completed what would be known as the Balloons Trilogy. Afterwards, major labels came knocking, he signed with Republic Records, started playing massive concerts and music festivals, and the rest of the story, well you know the story because this is before they're famous. My name is Mike McCredden and this is an updated version. We are going back through our catalog of videos we've made and given the ones that need an update, well, the update they deserve. We got a lot of other videos on this channel. We've done Drake, we've done Nicki Minaj, we have done, uh, I don't know, about 600 people. Be sure to browse around, hit subscribe, and as always, let us know in the comments down below who you want us to document next. Also, the last time I think I said his name wrong. Abel. Abel. Glad we're, that's why we do updates.